So you've probably clicked this video today wondering how you can make your first $10,000 in sales with Google Ads. You have come to the right place. In today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you some steps and tips to help you guys hit your first 10K with Google Ads. I can't stress enough, Google Ads is such an incredibly powerful platform for e-commerce businesses. If you're not using it, you need to use it. And even if you are using it and struggling, stick around and watch this video, it will definitely help you out. Just before we jump into the video, if you've got any questions, just drop a comment down below or drop me a message on Twitter or Instagram. Links to those will be down below in the description. And if you are new around here, don't forget to subscribe. And finally, I do own a Google Ads agency myself. We help manage and grow e-commerce websites, Google Ads accounts. So if you are struggling and you want our help, again, just drop me a message on Twitter or Instagram. Now, just for a bit of context, I have been using Google Ads for both of my e-commerce websites for the last couple of years. And just on my UK site alone, in around two years, I've generated over 1.7 million pounds in sales entirely from Google Ads. So they are incredibly powerful and I can't recommend them enough. But in today's video, this is suitable for beginners or people who are struggling to find consistency. I'm gonna be sharing methods with you, how you can improve your Google Ads, generate your first 10K in sales with Google Ads. So if we jump into it here today, before you run ads, this is stuff you wanna consider. And again, going back to the point, if you're already running ads and you're not doing any of these points here, make sure you implement them immediately because they will help you in the long run. First up, and this is something I tell so many people, is take time to master the appearance of your website make it simple, but make it professional. I have a lot of people contact me on you know, Twitter and Instagram asking me to review their stores. And most of the time I tell them to make it look less spammy and more professional. If you want examples of this, just go onto Google, look at high ranking products for high popular search terms and just see what those websites are doing. Obviously aren't drop shipping. They look professional, they look clean. There's no countdown timers, you know, stock scarcity timers and things like that. You wanna keep it clean, simple and professional to see success with Google Ads. Gone are the days of using spammy countdown timers and things like that. They used to work with Facebook ads. For me, I don't see them working on any other ad platforms, let alone Google. So you need to invest your time into making your website look good. And that is a clean product page you wanna mainly focus on because odds are that is the landing page your Google ads are gonna drive your traffic to. So you wanna make sure your product page has clean images, HD images, GIFs in the description are really, really good as well. Showing the product how it works in the description with the GIFs is a very good way to increase your conversion rate. Get to the point with the key features quickly in the product description and don't drag on for too long. People don't have time to sit there for five, 10 minutes reading a extended and lengthy description unless it is a product that you sell for several hundred dollars because more thought goes in to the purchase when a product is obviously higher priced. But for a lot of us, we're selling cheaper impulse type products. A short, concise description that gets straight to the point will always help and benefit you. Like I've just said, things you can remove if you're already running Google Ads, you've got countdown timers, stock scarcity alerts, sales pop alerts, low quality reviews, now, the sales pop thing, I'm sure a lot of you know, is when you go on a website, you'll see in the bottom left corner, you know, so-and-so has bought this item from the USA. Again, back in the day, that was a trick that seemed to work and increase conversion rates. People are so used to seeing this now. And if I'm being honest, for me anyway, I don't know if this is just because I own dropshipping websites, it just screams spammy. And a lot of people also probably associate these sales alert messages that pop up on websites and they just instantly think of a spam, potential scam website. So that's something to turn off and they also slow down your site as well. So currently I don't see them working. So if you are using them, I would suggest turning them off and low quality product reviews as well. There's nothing wrong with using websites like, or should I say Shopify apps like Looks to import reviews on your product page. I use Looks myself, but you need to use it right and use it so it helps your conversion rate. I think I even mentioned in another video, having five very high quality reviews, very descriptive reviews, including reviews that almost sell the product for you by listing extra benefits, if you have a customer review on your website, or should I say on the product page, and the customer is telling people how this product has changed their life or benefited them in some way, that is really, really helpful. Whereas a lot of people just will import 100, if not more, picture reviews from AliExpress, either with no text at all, or they'll have very poor translated text, and it just doesn't make sense. Again, really, really doesn't do anything good for you. If you've made a bad habit of doing that, get rid of those reviews, start from scratch, focus on having five to 10 very high quality reviews on your products. And over time, you can add more, obviously, but just to start with, five to 10 will be absolutely fine. And finally, this is the purpose of building your brand and your company's reputation. 
be transparent with your customers and set clear expectations, especially with things like shipping time. Have a shipping page that the customers can easily access. Clearly tell your customers how long they're gonna be waiting for their order and also offer regular updates through email and SMS as well. It reduces the number of email complaints you get if people are receiving regular updates for their order and it also helps reduce chargebacks as well if you're keeping your customers updated and that can just be a simple email flow if you're using email marketing. I touched on that in my previous email marketing video so make sure you go on my channel and check that out if you wanna set that up in more detail. Now moving on to launching ads if you are a beginner or if you're struggling to see results with a certain campaign type, I suggest keeping things simple and using standard shopping rather than jumping into the deep end with Performance Max because they can be very tricky and they can eat your budget like crazy. So make sure you check out my low budget strategy video as well on my channel, going into a lot of depth and how you're gonna be making your standard shopping campaigns. And just briefly for this video, using a standard shopping campaign allows you to control your budget. You'll want to bid low for your cost per click. Don't use anything like maximize clicks or anything like that, manual CPC, don't use enhanced CPC and set the bids on each product very low. That way you'll gradually be spending your money each day and it won't be in your budget and it will slowly get you up to the point where you're ready to scale. So if you are limited by budget, this is the best way to go. And another thing I can't stress enough is make sure your conversion tracking is set up correctly. A lot of people think theirs is set up correctly. Until they start receiving orders through Google, they'll probably notice only 50% of them are tracking. This is extremely harmful to your Google Ads account and the potential growth of your ads in general. Because if Google's not tracking every sale, you won't be able to scale with things like target ROAS goals and things like that because Google don't know all of the sales that are coming in, they're not tracking them, and you'll be reading false data and making poor decisions because you're not being given accurate information so you can scale. So I'll leave a link at the top of the description to Fiverr. It is someone I have worked with who fixed my conversion tracking issues. He's not expensive at all, and he'll literally fix it in a matter of 10 to 15 minutes for you. So make sure you check out that link and get that fixed before you even consider running Google Ads, or if you are running ads, just go and get it fixed now if you've noticed your conversion tracking not working. Okay, the next step, once you set up your standard shopping campaign, you'll want to leave it running for a couple of weeks without touching it at all. The only time I would say make changes to your campaign in the first few days is if you notice a particular product spending a lot of your budget and just completely dominating the amount of um, ad spend your other products are getting. And if it's not getting any sales, I would then go into your campaign, just reduce the bid of that product a little bit just to calm it down a bit so it frees up some budget for your other products as well because you don't really want one particular product taking up all of your budget early on because it will limit the performance of your other products and then you won't know if your other products are potential winners if this one product is just eating all your budget so that's the only time i'd mess around with your campaign in the first couple of weeks is just if you notice particular products overspending now when you begin to see results sales coming in for your website and the products within this standard shopping campaign you are able to scale with standard shopping without jumping straight into performance max the way i like to do this is increase your daily budget if you are achieving your daily budget each day just increase it by around 20% every seven to 10 days is what I usually do with standard shopping. It's certainly what I did on my accounts when I started and this is still the method we use today on our clients' accounts at our agency that use standard shopping. We monitor the budget. If they're consistently spending their daily budget profitably, then we increase it by around 20% every seven to 10 days. Now, if you keep scaling your budget and you're not increasing your max cost per click bid on your product, you'll get to a point where let's say your campaign is a $300 campaign and it will only be spending 200 to $250 per day. At that point, you will then want to start slowly increasing the max CPC bids for each product especially the ones that are converting well. Because you're giving Google more freedom, you'll be able to spend more per click, and essentially, you'll be able to get more traffic when you start spending more per click on each product. Now, you're probably wondering how often and how much should I be increasing the CPC by? I usually do no more than five cents every seven to 10 days. So again, the same time frame as the budget scaling, it's probably good to scale your budget and the bids at the same time, just so you can make sure that you are achieving that daily budget every day because you do wanna be spending a good amount on Google Ads to not only get to the point where you're consistent and you can scale quickly, but if you're not spending much at all, it will take you months just to get to a point where you can begin to scale. And if you are concerned about your ROAS falling as you scale with standard shopping, you can use the alternative method of just applying a target ROAS, but again, only use this if you have your conversion tracking set up correctly. But I would like like to think if you're at the point where you're scaling quite well with standard shopping 
you have got that set up correctly. Now, a lot of people, if they see an unprofitable product in their campaigns, they'll just kill it, remove it from their website, they'll just forget about it and never come back to it. That is the worst thing you can do. There are a million and one ways you could potentially change a poor product on Google into a potential winner. And a few of those things could be changing the product image, price, title, description, the reviews I mentioned earlier. What I like to do if I see a product performing badly, and when I say badly, I mean it's not getting many sales, it's running at a loss on Google, not making you any profit whatsoever. So this would usually be a product that's getting a 1.5 ROAS or less, depending on your break-even ROAS. If it's basically performing less than your break-even ROAS, make some changes to it to try and bring it above so it is a profitable product for you. Now, I wouldn't jump in and make loads of changes at once if a product's performing badly. I like to make one change, leave it for seven days, I'll then make a note to myself to come back after seven days, check the performance of it over the last week. If it's doing well, then you could probably leave it for a little while, or if it's still doing badly, then go ahead and implement another change like price, description, reviews, etc. There are a lot of variables here you can play around with, and for me, most of the time, I am able to improve the results of a product just by changing things over on the website side of things. So give it a go and don't just kill a product if you think it's doing bad. You may be sitting on a gold mine and it might just need that one little tweak for it to become a really good product for you. Now, a big question I get is when should I be moving over to performance max? Now, if you're like me, you might find you hit a limit with scalability with standard shopping. You'll get to a point where your budget is quite high and no matter what you do with your cost per clicks and things like that, you just won't be able to spend that budget at scale. So if you are profitable by a good amount, getting a decent ROAS on a consistent daily basis, that is when you would wanna consider jumping over to Performance Max. And all I would simply do is make a brand new Performance Max campaign, put all of the products from your standard shopping within that campaign, run it at a similar target ROAS to what that campaign was getting when it was a standard shopping campaign. For example, in the last 30 days or so on standard shopping, you were getting a three ROAS, on your new performance max campaign, I would just set it a bit below that. So it does spend at something like a 275% ROAS. But if you wanna scale quicker and there are clear winners in your standard shopping campaign, when you're transferring your main campaign over into a performance max campaign, just take out two or three of your best selling products and put them into their own performance max campaigns. It will allow you to do things like set a higher target ROAS, have more accurate and targeted headlines, images, audience signals, and things like that, and will ultimately allow you to scale more precise, but it will allow you to scale quicker, and this is a method I use as well. I have around three to four single product campaigns that are all performance max, and they do very well. So I hope you found some of these tips useful in this video. A lot of these are good for beginners just starting out with Google Ads, or if you are struggling, definitely take on board some of these tips, because I'm sure even things like just changing your product's price or the reviews on the product page will help and increase your conversion rate for products that are doing badly. Or if you are just having bad results in Google, just take a break, Go and improve your website, implement some of the things I've mentioned here, and I'm sure you will see better results. And I know I go on about it a lot in my videos, especially if you're a dropshipping business, focus on building a good brand, a good customer experience, so you can get those repeat buyers on the back end as well. Because if you are just running a dodgy dropshipping store with terrible products and 30 day shipping times, you really won't last, especially with Google ads. So invest your time into your brand and your business. And once you find that consistency with Google, Google, it is honestly great and it's actually quite difficult for it to completely go away whereas things like Facebook and TikTok you might be consistent for a week or so and then that product just fatigues and dies out with Google if you're selling products that have demand all year round you, you just won't experience that so again I hope you found this video useful if you are interested in our Google Ads agency just drop me a message on Twitter or Instagram and I hope you have found this video useful other than that thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in my next video